There's a new Captain America in town, and I don't know about you, but I'm with him until the end of the line. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier finale brings all the players together for a big explodey meetup in New York, and Sam Wilson is out here leading the way in the red, white, and blue. Directed by Kerry Scoggin, the season's last episode does right by the MCU's first Black Captain America, plus a new future for John Walker, and we finally learn who the power broker is. Nah, just kidding. I think we all figured that out a long time ago. We'll add all this up and try to get an idea of what Captain America 4 could be about. But before we get into all of that, I have to warn you, we're about to spoil the entire thing right now. So if you haven't seen it just yet or if you just don't want to know, now would be the time to pop on that slick new Wakandan wingsuit and make for the wild blue yonder until we're done here. Black Captain America, huh? Damn right. All right, now that we're past the spoiler warning, here's the big reveal. Sam Wilson is Captain America. Now, we all suspected it at the end of the last episode that box from Wakanda did indeed contain his new gear and a new look. We'll break down this look and compare it to the comic suit that inspired it, but you know what, we'll get into that in just a second. First, let's recap how we got here. The Flag Smashers and Batroc are in New York. They've taken the entire GRC hostage. The GRC, of course, is the big multinational governing body about to vote on resetting the world borders after the blip. The Flag Smashers hate this and are trying to stop it by taking the entire GRC hostage. He's here. Sam also doesn't really believe the GRC's vote will be a good thing, but he refuses to allow the Flag Smashers to go through with their plan. With Sam in the air, Bucky's the boots on the ground, and oh, that's Sharon Carter, who of course is also on hand for the big action set piece to close out this season. Quick side note, uh, we gotta talk about Sharon, guys, for real. So let us finish this recap and we'll get into the Sharon stuff, trust me. So keep those theories handy. Anyway, fisticuffs ensue. Sam shows off what the suit can do and faces off against Batroc and, oh, looks like this Frenchman is 0 for 2 in getting his ass kicked by Captain America. Meanwhile, the Flag Smashers take pretty much the whole GRC hostage by herding them into some paddy wagons and a helicopter. And pretty much every place anyone tries to safely stash the GRC members, the Flag Smashers have their own people there already. Sam chases down the helicopter while Bucky chases the paddy wagon. Now, did we mention that Sam's new suit includes a new Red Wing? Because it does, and it's a bit more equipped than the last one was. Meanwhile, Carly and the Flag Smashers are regrouping in a nearby construction zone, and Carly's talking about dying for the cause, and the rest of them are all like, well, do we have to? Thanks to some fancy flying and some cool new features on his suit, Sam saves everyone in two helicopters. Meantime, Bucky is really out here just throwing himself into his work. And while he gets the GRC members out of the paddy wagon, guess who shows up? That's John Walker, sporting a homemade shield and veins full of super soldier serum, ready to mix things up. Another quick side note, if you dig Sam's new Captain America suit, wait until you see how John Walker ends up in this episode. More on him in a minute. For now, back to the recap. Long story short, Sam, Bucky, and John Walker work together to kick the Flag Smasher's asses, while Sharon helps in the background by being as shady as possible. By the end of the big fight, the GRC is saved, Sharon kills Batroc to cover up her tracks, and Sam ultimately defeats Carly by refusing to fight her. Sharon doesn't though. She has no problem ending this thing by shooting Carly in the back, which honestly seems more about covering her tracks than helping Sam. Bucky and Walker capture the rest of the Flag Smashers. They're getting sent off to the raft and nope, d never mind because they're all dead now thanks to Zemo's butler, who honestly, whatever Zemo is paying this guy, he definitely needs to give him a raise. You just don't understand. I'm a black man carrying the stars and stripes. What don't I understand? Anyway, Sam still believes in Carly's cause and convinces the GRC to delay their vote and work harder to actually help the people of the world struggling to rebuild after the blip. To end the episode, Sam connects with Isaiah Bradley, taking him and his future superhero grandson to the Smithsonian to view its newest exhibit of the first black Captain America. Now they'll never forget what you did for this country.
Alors maintenant, Power Broker, tu vas devoir me payer quatre fois ce que tu me devais. Or, je vais dire au monde entier qui tu es vraiment. OK? And there's that reveal. Now, if you hadn't guessed already, Sharon is the power broker. Or at least Batroc seemed to think so before she made sure he'd keep his mouth shut forever. I don't do blackmail. And that's important because though we now know the truth, the people in the MCU who knew that Sharon was indeed the power broker and had reason to expose her are now dead. Now, neither Sam nor Bucky realized this yet because Sam comes through on his promise to clear her name in the States. And right after she has a little mid credit ceremony with senators about this, she immediately hops on the phone trying to sell state secrets. So on the surface, yes, Sharon is a full-blown villain now, operating right under everyone's noses. Now, I'm sure we are not alone in thinking that there's always the chance that this Sharon could be a scroll. Now, that's always a chance now that the scrolls are in play, but we think it's more likely that Sharon is still peddling power as the power broker, even though she no longer has the benefit of a mad scientist creating super soldier serum for her. We're gonna need a US agent. She said it! She said the thing! Anyway, speaking of the serum, this episode also leaves John Walker in a pretty good spot, considering he totally bloodied Captain America's shield just a few episodes ago. Now, the big reveal here is that after his heroics to help thwart the Flag Smashers attack in New York, he's back in the game. He's US agent. Now, the officialness of this is left pretty ambiguous here. I mean, this scene takes place in the same room where US senators do all kinds of official stuff, so it feels like this is up and up. The thing is, no senators are actually there, and it's Contessa Valentina Allegra. You know what? I'm just gonna call you her Val. Don't call me that. Copy. Whatever! You know what point is, Val is the one who christens John Walker the US agent, so how aware the US government actually is about all of this certainly is still in question. John Walker certainly earned his keep this episode, showing up on scene in New York just at the right time and actually fighting competently and not fueled by murderous rage. Though with that said, if he tried to kill anyone with that generic shield he made in his garage, it probably would just break. <laughs> Tying up loose threads, Bucky seems to have gotten some closure, Zemo is once again cooling his heels in the raft, and if it seems like Marvel Studios is going to make more stuff about these characters, well... Captain America 4 is coming. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier finale hadn't even been out for 24 hours when news broke that Marvel Studios is reassembling the team, developing Captain America 4. No release date for this just yet, but this is great news. More so than WandaVision, Falcon and the, uh, sorry, Captain America and the Winter Soldier is definitely wide open for a sequel, and it looks like this new film will keep this story going. Now, obviously, there are tons of ways they could go with it, most of them having to do with Sharon being the power broker. Now, she's in a unique position now that she's been reinstated, and she seems totally willing to use that to her advantage. Now, what's the worst that could happen if she got caught? She'd just become an enemy of the state again. And just because Zemo is locked up on the raft doesn't mean he's totally off the board. Bucky broke him out of prison once. If he needs to, he could do it again. And after all, Steve Rogers was the one who infiltrated the raft to free his friends. Odds are Bucky and Sam could pull off the same thing. John Walker slash US agent could well play into the new film as he's forging his own identity as US agent. Now I think there's still lots of mileage they can get out of a character who's basically a dark opposite of Sam. And since Cap 4 is still in the development stage, that means that there's probably at least a whole phase of MCU that will come and go before this comes out. Black Widow, which is set in the past, and Secret Invasion seem pretty likely just based on the fact that characters like Widow and Nick Fury have direct ties to the Captain America family. I got my eye on you. Seeing these characters on the big screen again is pretty exciting to think about. So we're hoping Cap 4 is just like Falcon and the Winter Soldier, only bigger and explodier. Not a ton of Easter eggs in this week's episode, but here's what we got. Sam's Captain America wingsuit is a pretty obvious one. The MCU version of this suit keeps pretty close to its comics inspiration, first appearing in Captain America comics in 2014. 
And speaking of suits, US agent's new gear is basically a black skin of his old gear, but now he's looking a lot closer to his comics counterpart. You know, I wonder if Val is gonna get him a new shield. Don't call me that. Now, when Sharon appears on the scene in New York, she uses Black Widow's cool face changer gadget from Captain America the Winter Soldier. Now, wouldn't it be kind of weird if this Sharon was a scroll underneath? I mean, using a face changer to mask a face that can change into anything? Or was this just the confirmation that Sharon isn't a scroll? You don't think I ever fought for something bigger than myself? That's all I ever tried to do, and I failed twice. Now, when Bucky is having a phone combo with Carly Morgenthau, he mentions falling, which is how the Winter Soldier was born. <laughs> Speaking of Bucky... Let's hear it for Captain America! He was the one who announced Steve Rogers as Captain America back in the day, and he does it again with Sam. Nice job, Cap. Thanks. But what do you think of Falcon and the Winter Soldier's finale? And what did you think of Sam as Captain America? And what's next for the power broker slash Sharon? And what do you think Cap 4 will be all about? Let's throw around some theories in the comment section down below. Anyway, thank you all so, so much for watching this episode of Cannon Fodder. And for more on Marvel, check out the incredible MCU that time forgot. But don't you forget to follow and subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch. Sharon, Bucky, what's going on on your end? Nothing, all quiet. I'm sorry, wait, who are I'm you? Captain America. I thought Captain America was on the moon.